Hello and welcome to this quick tip video. This is all about how to repair foam hinges on planes and wings. Now this is a re request from one of my Patreons, but it's actually a really good question. I've spent quite a bit of time over the last few months helping quadcopter pilots in particular get into fixed wing. And unfortunately, just like learning to fly a quadcopter, learning to fly fixed wing involves lots of crashes in the early stage. Now, I looked at the AXN plane a couple of weeks ago and was really impressed with that. And that's probably my top choice if you're trying to get into learning to fly and see my videos on it. I'll put some links down in the description if you want to see how to avoid some of the common traps that pilots fall into, particularly if you are coming from quads to fixed wing. But one of the questions that I've had is how do you fix foam hinges? Because occasionally you'll have a crash. And the great thing with this foam is that if you have a hot glue gun and a bit of patience, you can usually, as long as you've found all the parts in the field, get the thing more or less back together. It might not be as pretty, but it will still fly well enough for you to continue to hone your skills. So I'm going to show the three most common methods that I use here to repair hinges. Uh, most of them are relatively quick, cheap and cheerful. With the exception of the last one, each of these methods only requires a little bit of tape and a little bit of time and patience. So let me go through the ones that I tend to use. The first one is the single tape method. Now, the tape that you use, you can use pretty much any tape, but I wouldn't use something like sellotape or something like that because over time you'll find that those tapes tend to get brittle and the adhesive tends to give up. So I'll tend to use things like duct tape or something like Blendome tape, which I've used when I built my KP and the 2 and also my Mini Drac as well. That's probably the best choice. It's relatively expensive, but you don't need a lot. Now, for the last one, you will need a couple of extra bits. But for the first one, let's just concentrate on the single tape method. So first of all, let me uh, break this hinge. I've just created these hinges out of pieces of foam board. It just is far easier to show this on the desk than trying to do it on a live plane. And at the moment, I haven't got any planes in bits. So hopefully this will work, but you can just transpose this onto the hinge on your model. So let's assume that that is what the uh, rudder or elevator or aileron looks like. And uh, it's completely come adrift. The easiest way to do this is just get a single piece of tape. Again, use really sticky tape and put it 50% over the separated control surface. Uh, make sure you've got a lots of overlap to stick to the other side. Uh, trim the edges. I try and put the tape as far up to the edges as you can just to provide the best mechanical connection. Make sure the tape is firmly down. Obviously, you're going to have to make sure there's no grease or muck on the control surfaces match it up to where it came from and then push the tape down on to the other side make sure it's completely fit now this is a great and quick easy way to do it i do tend to do this on things like my texemo wings um, but if you want an additional layer of support and the way i did it using blender and tape on that uh, mini drac or the Kaipaina, then what you can do open the hinge completely and then put another line of tape on the other side and what you'll find is that the tape will kind of stick to itself very slightly through the middle so you'll be able to see a little bit of uh, of sunshine through the gap but that's not a bad thing it does mean that it's going to stick really really well now obviously you can see the tape this is going to be a pretty lousy way to do it if you have a really uh, sophisticated paint job it's a scale model this isn't great but for something like a wing it's a really quick and easy way to do it. The single tape method is what I use with things like duct tape that's pretty stiff on its own. If I'm using something like Blenderm, I'll use the double-sided tape method. Now, if I've got a model where that isn't going to work very well, then there is another option that I tend to use with, uh, with that kind of tape. Again, I'd recommend using a nice flexible tape. And as I tend to have always have a roll of Blenderm somewhere, I would probably use that for this as well. So again, let me just break this hinge apart we'll pretend it's been in a crash and it's been ripped off which is always disappointing to see but not uh, the end of the model by any stretch of the imagination so what you're going to do is you're going to get two little bits of tape and you are then going to turn one of them over and stick it to the other one uh, with the overlap being about the depth of the actual hinge itself now, the reason that we're going to do that is we're going to actually wrap it around the hinge. Uh, so it's not going to run the whole length. So find the sticky side first, stick it onto the detached control surface, 
I'm just going to trim this just so it's um, not going to flap around so it's reasonably neat. And then we're going to do that. And hopefully you can see here that what it means is that the uh, there's no stickiness when the control is deflected to the maximum position. It's not going to stick to itself. So let me make another one, stick that at the other end. I would always recommend having three, four or five, depending on the size of the control surface. So let me just do another one. Now, what we're going to do is with this one, we're actually going to stick it the other way around so that it provides a connection in each way. Make sure that the tape is uh, perpendicular to the control surface. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hold that middle one back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push the other piece into position uh, just off the just on the edge of where that unsticky part is because we put the two bits of tape together. Stick that down and then we're going to stick the other piece of tape over the top. Now in reality this can be quite a tricky thing to do on a real size wing particularly if it's a large model you have to try and do one side and then you've got to kind of slide the Z hinges through you kind of open it up a little bit with your fingertip slide the Z hinge through for the other way around and stick it now it does provide a really flexible hinge super flexible more flexible than the original hinge that was probably in place before it got broke um, I think I've just stuck that one on the wrong way around but not to worry uh, but you can see compared to the other tape method it uh, is much more flexible the other tape method Method is probably a little bit more sturdy and that's the one that I would use on a wing but the Z hinge method is great if you don't want lots of tape showing. The final method that I use and I don't use this one a lot it tends to be on scale models when uh, an aileron or something is ripped off in the in a nasty crash uh, is using a hinge. Now you can buy these little hinges um, I've also got designs for them on Thingiverse so you can download and print your own. They come in loads of different sizes. Um, all you need to do is to cut a pocket in both sides. And for those control surfaces where they move equally up and down, you would put the hinge in the middle. Now, you can also get hold of things like this Dubro product uh, hinge knife. And what you want to do is th they come in lots of different sizes in the packet. You want the knife that's the same size as the hinge. You make sure that both of the points are exactly aligned with how the hinge is going to work and this is really critical with these kind of hinges and then you push it into the foam to create the pocket for the hinge. Now this is a much more accurate way of doing it than using an exacto but if you're careful something like an exacto will work absolutely fine. Then you kind of test fit the hinge make sure the pocket is deep enough. You want to sink it in so the hinge pin perfectly lines up with the actual hinge itself and then you're pretty good. Now normally the minimum you're going to use of one of these is two of these hinges in the control surface but realistically you're going to put another one probably on the other side of wherever the servo is connecting into the control surface. The other trick then with these is that you have to be really careful about your pockets. Um, I use a, a glue that sets up quite gently so it gives you a little bit of working time but once you've figured out where the pockets need to be cut and you've kind of positioned the hinge you can kind of offer the other side up mark it with a couple of dots on the top again cut the other pocket being super careful to have the hinge in line with the wing because if it isn't then you'll find that the control surface will kind of snap in either direction and won't move smoothly then what I would do is put a little bit of glue in each of the pockets push the hinge together and then flex the control surface uh, before the glue sets up and make sure that everything is all fine. By flexing the control surface, it'll actually pull the uh, the hinge into the perfect alignment. And that's why sometimes it's worthwhile having a slightly bigger pocket and using a glue that won't set up immediately. So those are the three ways that I do it. The hinge repair requires some extra specialized equipment, but almost provides like an invisible fix. Perfect for scale planes. The Z hinge is better if you only have access to tape for things like scale models or ones that have a paint job but the one I tend to use the most on uh, wings and stuff particularly because it's a repair in the field is going to be the single or double tape method.
Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.